Hello and welcome back to White Lines Football. Lewis again here today, back with another episode of Lewis's Lounge. And today I'm actually in Lewis's Lounge. This is my lounge. Not my lounge, my family's lounge, but it's my lounge. Nevertheless, we go on to the video. So, as you can tell by the title, Adrian Pennock has finally left Gillingham. Jamie Day's gone with him. Um, apparently, it's by mutual consent, but we all know that old chestnut, it wasn't by mutual consent. Uh, Pennock said he would never walk, and now apparently he's agreed to leave. So, clearly, that's not the case. I think he's been sacked or either that, or he sat down in front of Scally and his Scally's sort of gone walk or you're sacked, or as in it's not happening, so you're going to need to be sacked, or we'll just say mutual consent. So, They've agreed to mutually, uh, mutually, sort of cancel the contracts, and I'm assuming that means Penny gets a payoff as well. So I'll just sort of breathe, breathe over the statement that Scally made earlier. Um, following Saturday's three 0 defeat at Rochdale, I spoke to both Fadie Penny and Jamie Day on Monday morning, and after some frank discussion, it was mutually agreed to terminate their contracts with immediate effect. So. Yeah, they're both gone. Um, I'd like to thank them both for their tremendous hard work. I'm extremely disappointed that their hard work didn't result in a more positive outcome. So, obviously, that's completely different to previous manager Justin Edinburgh, where Scali sort of slated the work Justin was putting in, but it was clear that Pennock cared. Day, obviously, I suppose he didn't really have any affiliation with the club, but he cared as well. And Lovell and Johnson as well, who are both actually still there. So, Scali also says, in the interim, director of football Peter Taylor will oversee the coaching and the running of the next few games, alongside Steve Lovell, Mark Patterson, a goalkeeper coach, Glenn Johnson. So it's sort of like a new gang of four, like last time when Edinburgh left, but obviously this time uh, Johnson and Taylor are there that weren't there last time. Uh, Hare and Hezen Tyler were there last time, but Patterson and Lovell there again. So uh, my immediate reaction is it's good. Uh, interesting that Lovell's still there because obviously Lovell was part of the coaching staff uh, there before. Obviously, it didn't work out, so it's a bit maybe a bit harsh that he's still there. But obviously, he's got links to the club. He's been there before under Edinburgh before he was sacked. So, yeah, maybe Sky didn't think that was fair to sack him. But Day and Pennock obviously have history at the likes of Welling, and they sort of do come as a pair. Um, yeah, so that's my brief immediate reaction is that it's good. Well, we'll get that in, into it a bit in, in a bit. So, just some background on Pennock. If you're not a Gillingham fan, if you haven't seen the Gillingham vlogs where we've been losing constantly, constantly. Obviously, we've got the win. Against Roch, uh, sorry, against Charlton in my last video, but I wasn't at Rochdale on Saturday, which we again lost three 0 another heavy defeat, back down to earth, and then obviously that saw Pennock's final game. So uh, Justin Edinburgh left in January of uh, this year. Pennock came in. There was talks when he came in of us striving to try and get into the playoffs. Obviously, it didn't happen, and we nearly went down. We came twentieth. We were waiting on that final day at Sixfields for that Port Vale goal. It didn't come, which meant we stayed up, which was obviously excellent. I suppose it's literally luck of the draw because one Port Vale goal and we, we could have gone down. So we stayed up um, and Pennock, of course, got the got the role full time. As you saw the video on the channel when he got that, uh, I was very much against it at the time. I mean, I, I was sort of a bit hopeful because obviously he cares about the club and he wanted to do the right thing. And if he had his right team, etc. and the right back in, then hopefully he'd be able to do something good with the team, which he hasn't managed to do. I don't have any doubt he cared. Uh, I met him, he seemed very, very nice, nice about the youth players, because I asked him about Aaron, Aaron Simpson, obviously, a friend of mine, he said Aaron's great, all that stuff, uh, we went to the Q&A before the start of the season, he seemed lovely, and it seemed like the team that was there of Pennock in charge, Taylor, director of football, which we knew he'd be okay, because he brought in some good players last time he was in charge, and then the likes of Day, the likes of Lovell, Johnson, the new fitness coach, who we haven't actually heard anything about yet, so it'll be interesting to see what's going on there, but I can't see any reason why he would leave, so... I'm assuming he's still there, which is good because obviously it's great to have a fitness coach. We were on fit team before, and now we actually look a bit more fit. But at the end of the day, um, Pennock, 18.75% win rate, which is absolutely awful. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the stats are, but I know it's only single figures is win since January. Uh, leaves us 22nd in League One, struggling to score. I think it's got six goals this season off the top of my head. Tom Eves has got four of them, and then Josh Parker and Sean Clare have got the other two. So that's not great because we knew we struggled to score last season. Uh, we didn't replace them, which maybe is partly Taylor's fault, which maybe is partly Pennock's fault because Pennock wanted to go with the physical approach. We've seen he's persisted with Eason Wilkerson up top, which hasn't worked, although Eason's got a few goals. Those three goals came in one game where it was awful the first half and then obviously got the goal the other day. But yeah, Wilkerson hasn't been too great with what Pennock's persisted. He hasn't really liked Nash. Um, it seemed like he wanted to go with maybe Parker at the beginning of the season, but again, Wilkerson wasn't necessarily fully fit then. But yeah, he did go with Parker, and then that didn't work out. 
Uh, he went with Wilkerson. He hasn't really liked Nash, hasn't really liked Condal. Obviously, he went with a back three slash five to start off with. Persisted with the whole preseason, went with the start of the season, and then changed it, went with the 4 4 2. That didn't work, so he went to the Diamond, which was short of sign, some, sort of showing some promise. But then, uh, we obviously, we got the smash in against Rochdale 3 0. Uh, on Saturday, Rochdale down there as well, so it's not like we played. It's not like we played a, a Wigan or even a Charlton, which managed to beat the week before. Um, poor manage management is something I've written down here. So obviously, something that is close to my heart. Um, Josh Wright obviously left after falling out with Adrian Pennock. Um, he lost the captaincy uh, when he came in, when Pennock came in, uh, because he wanted a centre back to be captain. Apparently, this season Lee Martin's captain. So is that more lies by Pennock? Supposedly so. Mark Wright obviously kicked off on Twitter at the time. Uh, today, even Osadei and Koncheski have been not Osadei Bay, sorry, Nubel and uh, Koncheski have been tweeting about sort of Nubel says seven months too late about when Pennock's gone. So it's clear about what ex players views are on the matter. Um, obviously, Stuart Nelson has said a lot of stuff about him in training. I'm not going to say it up here because I don't want to drop him anything. But I've heard things that Pennock spoke of him negatively. Um, obviously, been dropped to fourth choice goalkeeper. Played a bit in pre-season, but then was demoted behind Hadler and then behind Arnold as well. And of course. Thomas Holy, who is our current first choice goalkeeper. Um, Cody McDonald offered a rubbish deal. Now, we don't necessarily know what happened behind the scenes there, but Cody was offered sort of ridiculous things, and Pennock would have known that if he wanted him, he'd have made the contract offer to keep him, and that wasn't made at the end of the day. Uh, Jay Manuel Thomas, as well, obviously sent him back as soon as he came in, more or less, uh, from his loan at QPR, even though he was still paying his wages. And uh, yeah, Pennock said that. Uh, Manuel Thomas didn't want to be there. Emmanuel Thomas said that that's not that's not the situation on uh, on Twitter. But again, he hasn't been given a squad number by QPR this season, so you don't know from both sides of the story, sort of thing. Uh, there's some weird tactical decisions by Pennock. Um, I slated him a couple of weeks ago at Oxford for likes of not leaving top twelve. Wilkinson was dropping back, etc., etc. Not transitioning into the three. Uh, I have no doubt he tried. He wanted to say solid defensively. But at the end of the day, we're not solid defensively. We've lost three 0 I don't know how many times this season we've just conceded goals, two clean sheets, which I know is an improvement on last season, but obviously still not great. Um, yeah, in terms of him and his tactical decision, he started off with a three at the back. Um, I was okay with that, but I thought he used it really badly because I thought he used defensive wing backs. Ogilvy wasn't a wing back. O'Neill was not really a wing back. But even in that situation, he's the one in the two in midfield rather than the two in the one, which we thought we were going to see. We thought Lee Martin was going to get the freedom. Bradley Dack had last season. He didn't get that, and that resulted in a lack of goals. And then he changed it. He changed it again. Credit to him for trying to change it, but at the end of the day, if he used the system right in the first place, then he wouldn't have had to do so. Um, yeah, another thing that sticks out for me, Pennock said after he'd already not done it a million times that he would always clap the fans no matter what. Now, after countless losses, he'd walk straight down the tunnel. I wasn't there Saturday, but apparently he walked straight down the tunnel again after three and a loss to Rochdale. Um, he said he'd always clap the fans no matter how much abuse he gets after Wimbledon. And um, yeah, two games later, he's not clapping the fans. So yeah, Pennock's gone. Um, I think it was an interesting appointment at the time. No doubt he had passion for the club. He's running with a with bad eggs in the dressing room on a very, very limited budget. But at the end of the day, um, the results aren't coming. So that's what you've got to do. Uh, in terms of who might come in at the minute, Peter Taylor, like I said, has got interim charge. will be selecting the team for the next few games. Um, as the quote says, few games. So... Looks like uh, Scully's going on a proper manager search. The interview process, etc. Hasn't already got someone lined up. Um, yeah, but Taylor said that he doesn't actually want the job permanently, which is excellent because it didn't work out last time. I think he does a good job as director of football. And yeah, I think he's going to stay there. And then obviously fans will be happy as well. And he knows how much abuse he got last time, so he probably doesn't want to repeat that either. Um, in terms of who would get the permanent job, I have got the odds up. Let me just find that on my telephone. So the current favourite is Nobby Solano, about... Of obviously after the rumours where journalists are tweeting saying Solano's in line to come out and replace Pennock, Pennock said he knew nothing about it, Solano said he knew nothing about it, so obviously that's where that's come from, but 2-1. to one. But to me, the fact that Scaly wants to have a proper um, managerial search suggests that uh, it's not Solano, because otherwise he'd be able to sort of walk straight in and Solano would have, like they would have been talking, which means he would have been lined up, but because it says a few games, that's going to take a, at least a couple of weeks, I thought. Uh, Peter Taylor's next at 4-1, to one. obviously he said he doesn't want it, but I'm um, wouldn't surprise me if Scully still went for it. It's the cheap option. He's already employed by the club. Uh, Chris Powell, again, excellent at this level. Um, some people call this football boring, but I think he's excellent. Definitely get the fans 
back behind back behind him uh, behind the team and yeah it would it would get fans really motivated and I think he'd do well here Mickey Adams poor man management his, uh, history of poor man management um, obviously he has struggled at teams he's been at sometimes but he can get worse Nigel Atkins I don't know why people still want him to manage a football club uh, Andy Hesson Tyler he's already in a job Curtis Woodhouse I don't know where that's come from um, no affiliation with the club as far as I'm aware and turn boxing and all that um, it's come a bit out of nowhere uh, Gareth Ainsworth again done really well at Wickham but that will require a payout Graham Wesley Walters then got Alan Stubbs who pretty much destroyed Rotherham uh, David Kelly John McCarthy Justin Edinburgh at 20-1 um, I think they're clutching at straws a bit there since someone said that on Twitter because he's obviously fallen out of the club we've got a court case going against him at the minute so I'd be stupid to employ him again and Mars at 20-1 as well also a weird one Danny Kedwell at 25-1 there we go um, yeah in terms of bets my money would probably be on Solano um Probably because of the rumours, but again, they might not be true because of because of um, what I said about how how he probably would have walked straight back in. But it's a bit of a weird one, so I think it probably had to come from somewhere. And I actually wouldn't be against Solano, um, yeah. Or I mean, I would I would say Taylor, but obviously he doesn't want the job full time, which is excellent because that wouldn't be pretty. Uh, in terms of who I'd like, I'd really really like Chris Powell. Um, I said it before we got Pennock. Um, I really like Chris Powell. Steve Cottrell as well. I think he's down there so I get 25 to 1. But their management managers, they probably have to be, you'd be saying they're probably dropping down a bit if they're to come to Gillingham for what they're worth. But again, they might want to uh, induct in a project and maybe they will do that. Out of that list, uh, Solano, Powell, Ainsworth. But again, we don't have the money to really pay anyone off. So at the minute, you're probably looking at free agents. But yeah. We'll see how that goes in the future. Obviously, we're struggling for goals. Um, we're in the relegation zone, like I said, we're 22nd in the league. And at the end of the day, you don't want to go down. Scully said this season, something he specifically doesn't want is a relegation battle. That's exactly what we're in at the minute. That's exactly what we're going to stay in unless we get um, the right management. That's exactly what we were going to stay in uh, if Penick stayed. So I hope you did enjoy the video. Leave your thoughts down below as well. If you're not a Gillingham fan, let me know what you thought, obviously. Um... <clears throat> or you, the following you'd have of it, sort of all you'd know is maybe some news you've heard or some videos you've watched of ours or other channels. So let me know what you think on the situation. Um, if you are a Gillingham fan, let me know what you think. You can tweet me at LLC Browning or at, at White Lines Media. Um, I'll be on both of them. Yeah, comment down below. Uh, please remember to check out the League One podcast. Great bunch of lads over there, our official partners, and White Lines F1 as well. Obviously run by Ibs. And yeah, I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, please remember to like, subscribe. Follow everything in the description and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.